Greetings and welcome to Yarnspirations.com. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life and in this video we're going to take a look at the Pulling Crochet Infinity Scarf. Now before we go too far, please take a moment to subscribe to the channel for fresh content in knitting, crocheting, and other yarny crafts every single week. Now you may have seen other planned pulling projects in the world and they have very sharp definitions and very specific breaks between the color. This one, which is made in Peyton's Classic Wool DK Superwash, which I have right here in Autumn Spice, although of course you can use any color that has that long slow repeat. Um, this is a more subtle pulling variation. So you can see that I do have my Argyle going on here. I do have my, uh, my diamond shape coming, but because the color lengths are a little different, from one color to the next. This is not going to be an aggressive argyle. It's going to be more subtle. And you can see it here in the photograph of the finished piece. It does swirl around a little bit, but I like it. It's subtle and it gives you the planned pulling effect, but it's not um, aggressively defined between the colors. So to make this infinity scarf, you're going to need six balls of the Classic Wool Superwash in Autumn Spice, which is the main color, one in Claret or Claret, depending on what side of the pond you're on, I suppose, for the uh, contrast, that's just for the edging. Now, uh, the first thing I wanna talk about is size crochet hooks. Now it says USG six or a four millimeter crochet hook or size needed to obtain gauge. Now we always talk about gauge. We talk about it over and over and over. And I know half of the time, one cannot be bothered with the gauge hook, but for this pattern specifically, which it also tells you in the notes, you need to get the exact stitch and row gauge because if you don't, we can't promise that the pulling is quite going to work out the way it's planned. Now, pulling is specific to each individual crocheter and everybody is going to do it a little differently. So I would love to tell you that it's going to be X number of stitches and X hook and, and it's going to exactly pull in this exact manner, uh, but it really is more of an art than a science. And so I'm gonna give you all the tips I can give you for you to have a successful outcome, but know that this is a project that you're going to have to fiddle with for a little bit. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you um, which I never show you on camera, but I'm doing it today, is all of my mistakes. <laughs> so I started with the gauge swatches and I went with a G hook. Now my G hook was a four and a quarter millimeter, not a four. And I tend, let's get it right side up. I tend to crochet a little loosely anyway, just as a human being. No, it was right the first time. So this is what I started with and it is way too large. So I got rid of that. Then I went down to an F 3.75, closer, but really no cigar. I, I didn't have the uh, pulling effect working and I was not getting anywhere near the rec recommended stitch gauge, which is uh, I believe 22 stitches to four inches or 10 centimeters. When I got down to the E hook, I got my gauge but I have to say the first time I did it, I didn't get the pooling the way I wanted it. So the first thing I'm gonna suggest that you do is to uh, doodle around with just a small swatch and make sure you're getting stitch and row gauge. Once you have stitch and row gauge, let me show you what I did to make sure that I got a pleasing pool. Once again, for a traditional planned pooling project, we recommend that you pick a yarn in which the color gradations are similar in length. Now, in this particular colorway, that is not the case. Again, it's cool and it worked out to our benefit, but I want you to take a look at the yarn real quick. So here's sort of a purpley color, which is long. And then we have this little splash of a, of, of a taupey brown. Then we have burgundy, which is a long color one little splash of this sort of a lighter brown. Then we have a dark brown that goes on. This is a nice long color, small splash of light brown, and then we're back to the purple. So the pattern tells you to chain 58. And what I'm going to tell you to do is to chain about a gazillion. I actually began 
Uh, I wanted to make sure that I was at the start of a color. So this purple, I'm not sure that's the whole length of the purple. So I started chaining. Again, it doesn't matter where you start chaining because the chaining doesn't have to match the rest of the piece. But I started the chaining at a beginning of a color. I chained the 58 that was called for in the pattern. And then I chained probably a dozen more after that because it doesn't matter if you have too much chain at the beginning. So you can see I did my, uh, my 58 and then I changed possibly a dozen more. And then I decided where I want, wanted the single crochet to start and I'll show you how I made that decision. At the end of the day, when my piece is done, all I need to do is unravel this. Now it's not quite as easy un as unraveling it from the side of the work that would be closer to the crochet hook, but you can uh, pull out pull out the tail and then just unpick, 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 unpick. And you can do that after your piece is finished. But it's better to have too many chains at the beginning than it is to have too few. So I'm gonna tell you, go ahead, chain maybe 70, give or take, and then come back and we will decide where to start the single crochet in the color sequence. If I did not mention it before, to be clear, I had to go all the way down to a three and a half millimeter or an E hook in order to get gauge. And honestly, I probably could have gone a little smaller because I am a very loose crocheter, but I also wanted to be pleased with the fabric. And if I had gone too much tighter, it would not have been fun to make for me uh, because my brain just does not like tight crochet. Anyway, now that I have my chain, you see I have my little pop of brown, my long burgundy, uh, my dark brown, it's got a little pop of light at the end. There's my long purple. Little brown, little pop of brown, and my long burgundy. So I've isolated that the long colors are the burgundy, the purple, and this dark brown. I have chained, again, a minimum of 58 because I know I need that, but I kept chaining until I got to the end of one of the long color repeats, in this case, the burgundy. Now the sample I showed you at the beginning and I'll show you again, I uh, started with purple, not the burgundy, but I'm gonna try it with the burgundy and see if it looks different. So I want to single crochet in the fourth chain from hook and I want that first single crochet to be the burgundy. So I'm gonna back off, I'm gonna unpick just a couple of these chains. I wanna make sure that I have enough burgundy left to make that first single crochet. I'm gonna pop one more out. Now, again, more art than science. I just know that I wanted to start with a stitch at the end of one of the long colorways. So I'm gonna count one, two, three, four. I'm gonna single crochet in that fourth chain from hook. All right, so my first single crochet is the same color as that turning and I very specifically made it the end of one of the long color repeats. Now all I'm going to do, some people call this the linen stitch, some call it the moss stitch. I'm going to chain one, skip one chain, single crochet in the next chain and I'm going to do that all the way across until I have uh, a total of 56 stitches. Once again, I'm gonna have some little chains hanging off the end, totally not a big deal. And you may notice that I'm working in the back or the bump of the chain. I do that all the time. I just think it provides a neater edge. You want to be consistent. A lot of people when they get frustrated with their plan pooling say, oh, I'm just gonna crochet looser and it'll be better. Or I'm just gonna crochet tighter and it will be better. But here's the deal. The phone rings, the dog wants out, the kids come home, something interesting happens on television, and you go back to crocheting the way you always crochet. Your gauge is your gauge is your gauge. It is unique to you as an individual. So it is much better to spend the time and mess around with the yarn and the hook and get a fabric that you are comfortable making. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep going until I have 26 stitches and then we're going to look at turning and beginning the next row. So we're at the end of the first row. We have those extra chains. Eh, not gonna worry about it. I'll pick it up later. So we turn the work at the end of the first row 
And now we're on the second row. Chain two, one, two, single crochet in first chain one space. So you're going to skip that single crochet that's on the edge and just go right into the space. And we're going to do that all the way across. Chain one, skip the single crochet, single crochet in the next space. Oops, I'm sorry. As I may have mentioned, this was a pretty small hook for me to go down to for this yarn, but it is what gave me the pooling. And as you saw when I was using the bigger hooks, it just was not working for me. So we're going to do this all the way to the end. And this is the only row that there is. You're just going to do the same row over and over. Now, it is going to take a couple of rows for you to see that the pooling is happening. And remember, in this particular yarn, it's going to be a more subtle pooling than you may have seen in other projects. I'm just really interested to see, because I started in a different color with a different color on the end than I did when I made the sample we were looking at earlier. I'm just really interested to see uh, if it comes out differently or if it'll basically be the same. Once again, coming up to the end of that second row. Now there's the uh, four chain. Remember at the beginning it was single crochet and fourth chain from hook. So that counts as a chain down here, a chain up there, and a turning chain. So I'm going to chain one and uh, single crochet in that space created by the turning chain. And then once again, from here on out, it's chain two turn or turn and chain two. <laughs> Skip that first single crochet, single crochet in the next chain one space, chain one, single crochet in the next chain one space. And you're going to do that all the way across and you're going to put your last single crochet in that chain two space. So it's the same row over and over and over again. So I'm going to go off camera and put five or six rows on this and see if uh, I can see how the pooling is going to work out and see if it looks the same or different than the sample I made earlier this afternoon. So let's take a look at these two samples. Now this one is the one that I made this afternoon before we were even thinking about making this video. This is the swatch that I made. Again, you can see my uh, X's here in the burgundy. This is the one that I started on camera that we did together. Now I have to say I don't see a huge amount of difference in the way the pooling is landing. Now this one, as I said, I started with a purple stitch and this one I started with a burgundy. Um, it almost looks like the reverse, you know, it, it almost looks exactly the same except it's flipped over. So I'm going to say it doesn't matter if you start with the burgundy or if you start with the purple, you're going to get a very similar, again, it's a subtle argyle, but you're going to get it and it's going to be the burgundy colors that pop. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I guess it's the last thing I want to talk about, when you are joining yarn, so you finish off one ball of yarn, and you're getting ready to join the next, you want to make sure that you're joining in the same color sequence, in the same section of the color sequence, even if it means you waste a yard here or half a yard there. Because if you join the yarn any old which way, what's going to happen is you're going to get a section of the pooling that looks very nice and even, and then all of a sudden it's going to head off into left field because the color sequence wasn't the same. So if you're going to join in the purple, if you have a lot of purple left, make sure you only have a little purple left on the yarn that you're going to join. So it, not only do you need to pay attention to the color that you're joining, but where in the color that you're joining. Hold the two strands up next to each other you know, and see, see where they're going to end and then make sure that you have approximately the same amount of yarn no matter where in the sequence you're joining. All right, because that will keep you from getting big lines in your pattern. You want the pattern to be consistent throughout. Of course, the more consistently you stitch, 
the more likely the argyle is to stay where it is. But as you noticed in the photograph of the finished project, because it is a more subtle color pooling than is traditional, it's okay if it shifts a little bit. It's to give you, um, you know, it's to give you some beautiful lines for your eye to follow while you're wearing the piece. But it's not like everything is going to march in perfect stair steps in this particular project. In any case, I hope you had a wonderful time. If this is your first entree into plan pulling, your, your 47th, I hope you learned some fun things. Thank you for joining us here on Yarnspirations.com. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for fresh content weekly on knitting, crocheting, and other yarny crafts. I'm Mary Beth Temple for Hooked for Life. Thanks for stopping by.